Saying no is not easy, but priority setting in health is actually about saying yes to the right patients and the right treatments. Every country in the world have a health gap. There is a gap between what is affordable, the health budgets, and the expectations or need in the population of services. Even in rich countries like Norway, there is a gap between expectations and available resources, and saying yes to the right patients is therefore very important. Priority setting in health has different definitions. I usually uh, use two uh, that helps me in my work on priority setting. One is the rationing of health by Ham Roberts uh, uh, from 2003. Withholding beneficial medical or public health services from individuals who would benefit from such services, whether or not that is an intended consequence of an explicit decision or not. A more uh, simple but still difficult definition is uh, that priority setting is a ranking of patients or health services in order of importance. So it means we say some interventions are more important than others. The question is, how do we decide what is high, low and medium priority? And here is an example from the essential healthcare package uh, in Ethiopia that was launched in November 2019, where there are three examples here of conditions and uh, respective interventions. And you can see that treatment uh, of patients with uh, hypertension uh, with uh, both statins and antihypertensives have been given high priority. Uh, treatment of prostate cancer with surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy uh, and radiation therapy has been given low priority. And this is important in a country where you have extremely scarce resources, uh, but interesting in the priority uh, decisions of this benefit package is that you see childhood cancers and diagnosis and treatment of acute uh, leukemia has been given medium priority. And the question is, is this fair? In order to answer this question, we have several uh, uh, international and national guidance on uh, what is a fair um, priority decision. And this is the guidance by World Health Organization making fair choices on the path to universal health coverage. And uh, that work started from uh, the 2013 uh, uh, WHO health report uh, where they uh, 2013 WHO report where they talked about universal health coverage and that this is uh, to ensure that all people obtain the health services they need, prevention, promotion, treatment, rehabilitation and palliation without risk of financial ruin or impoverishment now and in the future. However, this involves ethical dilemmas about how to balance the goals of UHC and uh, other concerns. And from this report, uh, uh, the cube of the healthcare system was uh, published, and this has become uh, a highly cited uh, cube. And there are three dimensions important uh, when we uh, deal with priorities in the health system. The first priority decision every country at different levels need to uh, deal with is what services would you include? Uh, and uh, as we saw from the Ethiopian benefit package, uh, the three examples, antihypertensives and statins, were decided to be included. Treatment of prosthetic cancer was not included. However, uh, childhood le uh, leukemia was given medium priority. So it was included, but uh, it was decided that this should be financed out the pocket. And that's the second dimension is the financing of the health services and a priority decision on whether this should be universal public finance or if it should be funded from direct out of uh, pocket payments. 
The third uh, priority decision is to decide who are eligible for the services that are included in the priority package of the country. Is it those living uh, in urban areas? Is it the rich or the poor? Is it everyone? These are decisions that need to be made uh, in order to achieve universal health coverage. And this is what was discussed in the WHO report from 2014, making fair choices on the path to UHC. Uh, three uh, steps uh, were uh, recommended from this uh, report. First, categorize services into priority classes by using relevant criteria for priority setting. Second, first expand coverage for high priority services to everyone, and this includes eliminating out-of-pocket payments while increasing mandatory progressive prepayment with pooling of funds. While doing so, ensure that disadvantaged groups are not left behind. These will often include low-income groups and rural populations. Ethical considerations that were discussed uh, is how do you choose uh, key services fairly? And then uh, three criteria uh, were mentioned, cost effectiveness, priority to worse off and financial risk protection. Whom to, who to include first? The sickest, poor, most marginalized or those that are hard to reach or special uh, um, employment groups. For which patients groups should uh, direct payments for key services be reduced first? Uh, those in the formal sector, the poorest, uh, lowest income quintile, or everyone. Uh, some unacceptable trade-offs were discussed, and one important is uh, it was considered unacceptable to expand coverage for low or medium priority services before there is near universal uh, coverage for high priority services. So this means out-of-pocket payments should not be reduced for uh, low or medium priority services before eliminating out-of-pocket payments for high priority services. Thank you. I am Shalane Johansson and I'm professor at Bergen Center for Ethics and Priority Setting and also a medical doctor working in addiction medicine.